people, I'm Garrett, this is Making Movies, and today we are looking at how to shoot slow motion and then what to do with that footage once you've shot it. Super simple episode today, not gonna take much time, but first, intro. <laughs> The way slow motion works is that we have a certain number of frames that play per second, giving us the appearance of motion. The more frames per second we have, the more visual data we are given. We can then take that visual data and slow it down to play back at the given speed that we want regular motion to take place in. So American cinema standard is 24 frames per second, but if I shoot in 60 frames per second and slow that down to 24 frames per second, time is going to feel like it takes just over twice as long. When shooting slow motion, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. These are principles that we use to make sure that the footage we capture looks the best it possibly can when we get it into post. The first thing to note is frame rate. Now for American cinema, the standard frame rate is 24 frames per second. More specifically, 23.976. That number is important. Remember that we're going to be using that later. The cameras that we shoot with though give us access Access to a whole host of other frame rates, 24, 25, 30, 50, 60, some even go 120, 240, and beyond. And the higher the frame rate we shoot in, the slower we'll be able to make that after the fact. Now, a really important thing to keep in mind is your shutter speed. The general rule of thumb is you want your shutter speed to be double that of your frame rate. So if we're shooting in standard 24, we would want our shutter speed to be one over 48. 48 is double 24. Four, that ensures that our footage looks the best it possibly can. But if we change our frame rate to shoot in 30, 48 is no longer the proper shutter speed. We would want to boost that to 60 because of course 60 is double 30. That's going to ensure that we have the most normal looking image possible. Now, you can play with that shutter speed if you want something that's much more crispy and clear, crystal clear for each frame, all you would do is crank that shutter speed beyond double your frame rate and it would really tighten up the look of that footage. In contrast, if we wanted it to be kind of smeary and soft, you could reduce that shutter speed below double your frame rate and that would give it a very soft look. Once you've shot the footage, we then can bring that into Premiere and very quickly and very easily adjust that to make it play back properly. So we open up Premiere here. You'll see that I have a whole host of clips that are all shot in 60, specifically 59.94, we call it 60. Actually, some of these clips I shot in 120 frames per second, but my camera already interpreted it from 120 down to 60, and now I'm going to take it from 60 to what I want it to be. So we'll select all of our clips here, right click, go to modify, interpret footage. This will bring up our modify clip panel and the first window in this panel is our frame rate panel. This says use the frame rate from the file, which of course shows us 59.9401. Or I can click this box here that says assume the frame rate is. This is where knowing the exact frame rate is super important because if we just type in 24 here, but our footage is 23.976 specifically, it's not gonna line up right or look as good as it can. So here I'm going to put in 23.976, go all the way to the bottom and hit okay. You can then see here that the frame rate has changed on all of these clips to be 24, but specifically 23976. So here we've got a clip with fire in it. And if I play this back, you can see this definitely isn't real time. This isn't real speed, but it looks really good. It's not stuttery, it's not too sloppy. And that's because it has been interpreted perfectly from 59.9401 down to 23.976. If you use Adobe products, you know there's a hundred ways to do anything and your process may look a little different than this. I like this process because I don't have to do any sort of percentage guesswork. From here, I can take these clips into my sequence and then if I wanna play with time remapping or speed ramping or any of those kind of things to play with how that slow motion works in my sequence, I can totally do that, but I have a really strong starting point. That's it. So if you found this helpful, go ahead and give this video a like. If you wanna see more stuff like this, go ahead and hit subscribe, and I will see you all in the next episode.